this is how you propagate it. First, you should cut uh, a piece of the stem, right? You know, like 20 centimeters long or something like that. And then you throw it like this. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the AgroForge Academy channel. Today I want to first show you an update on on this agroforestry area here which was planted a few months ago but especially i want to talk to you about this little plant here which is uh currently one of my favorites and one that came to solve um, a problem for me and but before i move right into it if you dig our our content that we're publishing here make sure you smash the like button right now before we start subscribe to the channel that's a best way you can help us reach more people so uh, getting right onto it let me first talk about this little plant here uh, the scientific name is Plectranthus ornatus if I'm not mistaken um, it is in, in Brazil there are several species of this plant and they're all called boldu they're very used for tea as a digestive tea it's really good for when you drink a bit too much alcohol, if you have a, a hangover or if you're just uh, shit drunk. You know, if you if you make a tea out of this little buddy here, you will get better uh, quite fast. And I tell that from experience. So it is a, an amazing plant. It's very used around here for for medicinal purposes. You know, not only for when you drink a bit too much, but you know if you've got any sort of a of a stomach ache, if you ate something that wasn't uh, um, so good, you know if you ate something too greasy and then your 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 stomach is kind of complaining a bit, this little buddy will help you out. And recently, I, I decided to start planting it everywhere in my system, and I was looking for a perennial ground cover for my pineapple system. And the pineapple system being, I mean, the pineapple being a low stratum species, it's kind of hard to find other species which are lower than the pineapple. So I need a, a species which belongs to the what we call the crawling stratum, which is the stratum beneath uh, the low stratum. And, you know, that wouldn't grow. Uh, more than the pineapple so that it, it wouldn't overshade it that was easy to manage because of course you have lots of species that will um, that will crawl but then those are kind of hard to manage you know you can't really prune them um, so it's kind of just hard to manage and so I need something lower than the pineapple right from the crawling stratum easy to manage and that can withstand drought as well as the pineapple ideally and as always the answer was staring me right in the eyes and this is usually the case for agroforestry assistance you know everywhere i've gone in my entire life as an agroforestry consultant i've always find the solution in the the farmers yard so in his backyard close to his house the solution is there and this buddy it grows all over my town everybody has it it grows on top of the walls it grows in the middle of the street it it's just everywhere you know it it, it really doesn't require much it doesn't die it's one of those plants that you can have six seven eight nine ten months of drought and it's going to lose a bunch of its leaves it's going to look ugly as, as hell, but it doesn't die because it's it's got these. It, it's really filled with water and it's got you can see that the, the leaves have some, you know, kind of a they're kind of waxy and soft. And this is all done. It, it's got it's it's filled with uh, with small hairs, right? Little trichomes. 
And so all of this is done in order to prevent losing water. The stems are very kind of mushy and watery. So it's, it's a plant designed uh, for withstanding long periods of drought. So now I started planting it everywhere. I got a bunch of seedlings. Uh, um, it's very easy to propagate as well. That's another uh, positive point about it. Um, and I'm going to show you a cool, some, some cool things about it. So I got it from, from a friend's uh, yard. She has a, a, big, uh, a big piece of land inside the city. And these, this buddy grows all over uh, the, the forest soil. When it, in places where there where a bit more of sunlight enters, so it is a uh, a plant that belongs to the crawling stratum. It withstands a lot of shade, but of course, if you have those abandoned forests that are completely closed, it loses a bit of a strength. But if you have forest, you, know, you can have a bunch of trees, but you have some you know a bit of sunlight coming in, as we do in agroforestry system, it's going to develop very nicely propagating method let me talk about that and this is how you propagate it first you should cut uh, a piece of the stem right you know like 20 centimeters long or something like that and then you throw it like this and that's planted <laughs> i mean it it will take root uh readily everywhere you can actually see that this one here it wasn't even touching the floor and it's got it's already rooting you know so it uh, it just propagates very easily uh of course <laughs> when i am planting it i don't plant it like that i just stick it into the soil a bit but it doesn't have to be much you know just to you know just okay the soil is not so wet uh, so I'm going to use my machete, but, you know, just stick it in like this and that's it. It's planted. The soil doesn't have to be wet. If it doesn't rain for, for you know, a week or so, it's not going to die. It's going to stay there and, and even for longer than a week. And, you know, it's fine. It's planted 90% of chance that it's going to take root. And then, like I told you, it's very easy to manage because it's so soft. So with a sharp machete, if it comes a time when I think it's okay, it's grown a bit too much, you know, I'll just uh, very quickly prune it. It's gonna re-sprout very nicely. Um, the the stems that are touching the ground, you know, I'm gonna step on them. Many of them are gonna take root. So that's gonna, um, you know, actually, it's gonna increase the population here. I could even prune it just by stepping on it. So, you know, I can uh, just step on it like that. So it's just, you know, it's gonna break some stems. They're gonna start touching the ground. They're gonna take root. So anyway, all around, it's a great plant, very easy to manage. As you can see, it's uh, very easy to cut. You know, just have a sharp machete. You don't need to, to do a lot of strength in order to cut it. So yeah, that's the way to, to do it. And uh, check it out. My machete is now kind of wet. You can see it. That's, it, it hasn't rained for a couple of days, but this is, uh, it's from the, the plant. This is the plant sap, right? It's so filled with, um, with water. Let me show it to you. I don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, it's very watery. I don't know if there's going to be enough uh, enough uh, definition from the mobile's camera for you to see the water coming out, but it's very watery. Um, so there you go. It's it's got medicinal purposes. It's easy to manage. It withstands drought. It's not very demanding in soil. Um, it likes soil with a bit of organic matter as long as it's got organic matter it's going to do fine and it's um 
that's it easy to propagate and the only downside for some people is that it's you know if you, if you do ha need to take the tea it's very bitter <laughs> it's one of the the bitterest things there is that i've ever tried so yeah i much prefer this one than this little buddy here the wandering jew so this one i just um uh, I just roll them up like this and then I just put them here on top of the bananas so that they dry out. Um, so let's take a stroll around the system. So this system was planted in November. Um, it didn't get a lot of rain because I, I, I didn't, it was raining so much that I decided not to prepare the irrigation for the system. But then right after we planted it, we had four months without rain. So, uh, you know, some things de didn't develop quite well. But, of course, the pineapple is very nice. There are many spots without um, without soil covering. You can see that. This was planted during a course. And, you know, the systems that are planted during the courses, they usually, they're not 100% uh, precise in some details because, of course, people are learning. And many people take a while to understand, even though they're seeing other parts of the system, but they take a while to understand what I mean by you need to put enough organic matter in the corridors as so that the corridors organic matter is higher than the, the bed we're planting in. But uh, people still have a hard time grasping what a lot of organic matter is. Anyway, it looks good. Now uh, I pruned the jack beans quite a, a couple of times or two or three times. Now I'm going to harvest. It's already releasing a few pods. Of course, when you prune it like that, especially when it's so dry, uh, it's not going to produce as many pods as it could. But I'm happy with that because uh, I produce a lot of organic matter, lots of photosynthesis, and I'm still going to get some seeds back. Uh, this other part here was planted after the course. It's the continu continuation of the of the field in the course. Um, and this I planted only me and, and my worker. And you can see it's a lot denser, you know, the system is just because of these small details that, you know, we take uh, into account and we make sure that we do it right. Uh, but then during the course, sometimes it doesn't go uh, perfectly right but that's okay it's part of the learning process and actually I had a in this course specifically this one that we had in November I was I was telling people because when people come to courses they always say oh that's great you know you you charge for the course and then you get people to work to do the work for you of course they say that jokingly but uh you know it's something that they 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 think and they say yeah but that's because you don't know the trouble we have after the course to fix all the mistakes that you do and then after uh, you know a couple of months after the course one of the participants asked to come back here to check out how the system was doing and then he you know i came him he, i showed him around and he helped me out a bit and then he looked at this system here which i planted alone with my worker and the system here in the course and then he said, oh, Felipe, now I understand what you're talking about when you say that. Uh, the systems and the courses are always, uh, you know, there's always something that's not perfectly, you know, 100% right. Anyway, enough, uh, en enough rambling about with words. I want to show you this little baby here. This is a special variety of cassava that's specifically used for, uh, for, animal fodder, you know, for producing silage. It's so much more vigorous than the others. You know, I've already, I've pruned it once. You can see the others have never been pruned and they actually, they're not doing very well. You can see that they're all uh, with these small dots and nutrient deficiency. Uh, this one looks great. It doesn't have uh, any problem in the leaves. It's, it grows a lot. And this one actually becomes a bit of a tree. Uh, it's not simply like a shrub, like cassava. It becomes a big tree. And this part that I planted here, you can see that it's uh, pretty thick. This was a branch of the tree. 
so you know the branch was this thick uh the tree it, it it becomes a tree so this is something i want to propagate a lot here and use it to kickstart the systems because it's so uh it, it grows by cutting so that's really easy so i just want to plant it uh densely in all of my tree rows and i think it's going to be a great uh solution for closing up gaps in the system because every now and then we know there's a part of the system where some plants didn't grow so well so you have this gap and i can just take a stem of this buddy and stick it up there so that it quickly covers up the the gap in the system so that's uh that's the idea anyway hope you enjoyed the video i highly recommend you look for this little plant that i showed you black trantus ornatus a great plant good for covering the soil not very aggressive and yet easy to propagate and yeah do that uh by the way if you are really into agroforestry if you dig the content we're creating and you want to take a step further you know in your agroforestry journey join us in our patron community you can join you can join us for $7.90 and by supporting us like that, you're going to get access to uh, videos earlier than your friends on YouTube. You're going to get access to some extra material that we have available there, some ebooks, some webinars, um, extra stuff that we're constantly adding. And you're going to get access to our Discord community where patrons have a chance to discuss uh, agroforestry things, exchange ideas, share pictures, and all that. And you get to participate in our monthly Q&A, which you must have seen already. Every month we broadcast that live here on YouTube. We go live with our patrons and answer their questions live. If you're not in the patron community, you're welcome to watch it, but we're answering questions from our patrons. So that's a good opportunity to have more interaction with us. So again, thank you for watching. If you haven't, subscribe and smash that like button. Cheers.